first Rose Bowl for Florida State, but Jimbo Fisher, there is a sense of familiarity here because of, you, of course you played in Pasadena for the Rose Bowl. But knowing that this isn't the end game, knowing mm. that ideally you want to be <laughs> playing again next week, what's been the key to not just the physical preparation, but the mental preparation for your players? Well, I think you have reminding them they do have one more game because they've all been through this set where the bowl game ends the season. We've had to say, guys, you know, we want to, we're going to be ready to play this game, but remember, we still have one more to go. So you just kind of throw the thought. You don't do anything in particular, but just occasionally throw that thought out there that, you know, this is next to the last game of the season. Where have you really seen the familiarity be helpful for your players? In the media days, I really have. In the media days, and hand on the amount of media you have here, and, and how it went on, and how much, how important this game is. And hopefully, when we get to the field, we'll see that. But you know, going to practice, you know, the, the surroundings, the atmosphere, those types of things in the media. I felt like the guys were more business-like this time around. Did you sense that at all? This team is a little more like that than last year. Last year's team had a little more personalities. This team has a little more quiet personalities. They're, they're more reserved. And they, and they are even in the locker rooms and when you coach them. But it, it, their beliefs are the same, but they're a little bit different. It's like having two different children. I was talking to a bunch of your defensive players yesterday, and they all said that Auburn's tempo last year basically smacked them upside the head. And when you consider that you haven't seen a team this year that has that similar tempo, and that's what you're going to see in Oregon, how much of a teaching tool do you think that is? It is. Well, Clemson was similar to this. They go pretty fast. But, again, I think it's going through it once and being a team that goes that fast, I think it kind of at least you have an idea about how you got to go about it. So hopefully it'll work. So many injuries for you on defense with yeah. the downtime, the ability to get your players healthy. Where do you think that will benefit you the most against Marriott and company? Rotation. Rotation of players, keeping guys fresh. And, and so when it gets to that third and fourth quarter, you're able to have fresh legs on the field. How about particularly on the D-line, getting Eddie Goldman healthy and, and, and getting Niles Lawrence Stample healthy too? That, that's going to be critical. Because up front, the game's going to be won up front. Because they, they run the football. And they got to protect Marcus. So, I mean, I think our guys keeping a fresh rotation, being able, and then you're chasing him around for a while, keeping that rotation up front is going to be critical. Offensively, we know Jameis Winston has such a great connection with Rashad Green. Nick O'Leary's the tight end of the year. Dalvin Cook's really come along the running game. But with Ifo Ekpre Olumu out, Jimbo, I'm curious what you think about Travis Rudolph and his ability as an emerging freshman receiver to, to be potentially an X-Factor. Oh, he can be. I mean, he if you go back and look in our games, Nick and Rashad got theirs, but when we were playing really good, Travis has had a lot of catches or critical catches in the game. And, you know, and even Herman Lane has snuck in there at times and done some of those guys. So I think there's going to be, always in big games like this, people take away your star guys at times. They're going to get their plays. But there will always be one or two of those young guys are going to have to step up. As you're formulating your message, that very last thing you say to the players before they head out of the locker room and into the tunnel, what will be pertinent in what you say at that moment? You, you control the outcome. You control what happens to you. Don't worry about And then don't worry about the outcome. Stay process-oriented. Sounds very much like your halftime speech against Auburn in the championship game. <laughs> it's very similar. Very Good luck, similar. Jimbo. Thanks so much for Thank the time. You. Appreciate it. Thank you.